Ping pong diplomacy Chinese, ping pang wai jiao, ping pang wai jiao, refers to the exchange of table tennis ping pong players between the United States and People's Republic of China PRC in the early 1970s. The event marked a thaw in Sino-American relations that paved the way to a visit to Beijing by President Richard Nixon. History Background The United States viewed the People's Republic of China as an aggressor nation and enforced an economic containment policy including an embargo on the PRC, following its entry into the Korean War in 1950. After approximately 20 years of neither diplomatic nor economic relations, both countries finally saw an advantage in opening up to each other. China viewed closer relations with the United States as a beneficial counter to its increasingly tense relationship with the Soviet Union, while the U.S. sought closer relations with China as leverage in its peace negotiations with North Vietnam. T. He 31st World Table Tennis Championships, held in Nagoya, Japan, provided an opportunity for both China and the United States. Topic: <laughs> Process. The U.S. table tennis team was in Nagoya, Japan, in 1971 for the 31st World Table Tennis Championships on April 6, when they received an invitation to visit China. From the early years of the People's Republic, sports had played an important role in diplomacy, often incorporating the slogan, Friendship first, competition second. During the isolationist years, athletes were among the few PRC nationals who were allowed to travel overseas. On April 10, 1971, the team and accompanying journalists became the first American delegation to set foot in the Chinese capital since 1949. The meeting was facilitated by the National Committee on United States-China Relations. Prior to the visit by the American table tennis players, 11 Americans were admitted into the PRC for one week because they all professed affiliation with the Black Panther Party which followed a Maoist political line. This was unusual, given that high-profile American citizens such as Senator Eugene McCarthy expressed interest in visiting China after the 1968 presidential election, but even he could not have a trip arranged for him despite his office. According to History of U.S. Table Tennis by American Table Tennis Players and Tim Boggan, who went to China along with the U.S. Table Tennis team, three incidents may have triggered the invitation from China. Welshman H. Roy Evans, then president of the International Table Tennis Federation, claimed that he visited China prior to the 31st World Table Tennis Championship and suggested to non-Chinese sports authorities and Premier Zhou Enlai that China should take steps to get in contact with the world through international sport events after the Cultural Revolution. Further, the American player Leah Miss Ping Neuberger, the 1956 World Mixed Doubles Champion and nine-time U.S. Open Women's Singles Champion, was traveling at the time with the Canadian table tennis team that had been invited by China to visit the country. China diplomatically extended its approval of Leah Neuberger's application for a visa to the entire American team. The third incident, perhaps the most likely trigger, was the unexpected but dramatic meeting between the flamboyant American player Glenn Cowan and the Chinese player Zhuang Zedong, a three-time world champion and winner of many other table tennis events. Zhuang Zedong described the incident in a 2007 talk at the USC US China Institute. The events leading up to the encounter began when Glenn Cowan missed his team bus one afternoon after his practice in Nagoya during the 31st World Table Tennis Championship. Cowan had been practicing for 15 minutes with the Chinese player, Liang Jilang, when a Japanese official came and wanted to close the training area. As Cowan looked in vain for his team bus, a Chinese player waved to him to get on his Chinese team bus. Moments after his casual talking through an interpreter to the Chinese players, Zhuang Zedong came up from his back seat to greet him and presented him with a silk screen portrait of Wang Shen Mountains, a famous product from Hangzhou. Cowan wanted to give something back, but all he could find from his bag was a comb. The American hesitantly replied, I can't give you a comb. I wish I could give you something, but I can't. This World Table Tennis Championships marked the return of China's participation after a six year absence. When the Chinese team and Cowan walked off the bus, journalists who were following the Chinese team took photographs. In the political climate of the 1960s, the sight of an athlete of communist China with an athlete of the United States was sure to garner attention. 
Glenn Cowan later bought a T-shirt with a red, white and blue, peace emblem flag and the words, Let it be, which he presented to Zhuang Zedong at another chance meeting. When a journalist asked Cowan, Mr. Cowan, would you like to visit China? He answered, Well, I'd like to see any country I haven't seen before Argentina, Australia, China. Any country I haven't seen before. But what about China in particular? Would you like to go there? Of course, said Glenn Cowan. During an interview in 2002 with the famous TV personality Chen Luyu, Zhuang Zedong told more of the story. The trip on the bus took 15 minutes, and I hesitated for 10 minutes. I grew up with the slogan, down with the American imperialism, and during the Cultural Revolution, the string of class struggle was tightened unprecedentedly, and I was asking myself, is it okay to have anything to do with your number one enemy? Zhuang recalled remembering that Chairman Mao Zedong met Edgar Snow on the rostrum of Tiananmen on the National Day in 1970 and said to Snow that China should now place its hope on American people. Zhuang looked in his bag and first went through some pins, badges with Mao's head, silk handkerchiefs, and fans. But he felt these were not decent enough to be a good gift. He finally picked the said silk portrait of Wang Shen Mountains. On the following day, many Japanese newspapers carried photographs of Zhuang Zedong and Glenn Cowan. When the Chinese Department of Foreign Affairs received a report that the U.S. table tennis team hoped to get invited to visit China, the department declined as usual. Zhou Enlai and Mao Zedong initially agreed with the decision, but when Mao Zedong saw the news in Dekangkao, a newspaper accessible only to high-ranking government officials, he decided to invite the U.S. table tennis team. It was reported that Mao Zedong said, This Zhuang Zedong not only plays table tennis well, but is good at foreign affairs, and he has a mind for politics. On April 10, 1971, nine American players, four officials, and two spouses stepped across a bridge from Hong Kong to the Chinese mainland and then spent their time during April 11-17 playing fun matches, touring the Great Wall and Summer Palace, and watching a ballet. Topic. Legacy During the week of July 8, 2011, a three-day ping-pong diplomacy event was held at the Richard Nixon Presidential Library and Museum in Yorba Linda, California. Original members of both the Chinese and American ping-pong teams from 1971 were present and competed again. In 1988, table tennis became an Olympic sport. Ping-pong diplomacy was referenced in the 1994 film Forrest Gump. After suffering injuries in battle, Forrest develops an aptitude for the sport and joins the U.S. Army team, eventually competing against Chinese teams on a goodwill tour. Topic. Reactions Upon his return to the United States, one of the American players told reporters that the Chinese were very similar to people in the U.S. He said, The people are just like us. They are real, they're genuine, they got feeling. I made friends, I made genuine friends, you see. The country is similar to America, but still very different. It's beautiful. They got the Great Wall, they got planes over there. They got an ancient palace, the parks, there's streams, and they got ghosts that haunt, there's all kinds of, you know, animals. The country changes from the south to the north. The people, they have a, a unity. They really believe in their Maoism. Topic. Nixon's visit Two months after Richard Nixon's visit, Zhuang Zedong visited the U.S. as the head of a Chinese table tennis delegation, April 12–30, 1972. Also on the itinerary were Canada, Mexico and Peru. However, China's attempts to reach out to countries through ping-pong diplomacy were not always successful, such as when the All Indonesia Table Tennis Association PTMSI refused China's invitation in October 1971, claiming that accepting the PRC's offer would improve the PRC's reputation. Because neither Soviet athletes nor journalists appeared in China following the appearance of the American players and journalists, one speculation is that the act showed the equal scorn of both countries towards the USSR. Topic. Result 
Ping-pong diplomacy was successful and resulted in opening the USPRC relationship, leading the US to lift the embargo against China on June 10, 1971. On February 28, 1972, during President Nixon and Henry Kissinger's visit to Shanghai, the Shanghai communique was issued between the US and the PRC. The communique noted that both nations would work towards the normalization of their relations. Furthermore, the U.S. recognized that Taiwan is a part of China and agreed not to interfere in issues between China and Taiwan. See also 1999 Baltimore Orioles, Cuban National Baseball Team Exhibition Series 2008 New York Philharmonic Visit to North Korea Summit Series Topic. References Boggan, Tim. History of U.S. Table Tennis Topic. Further reading Talking Points. USC U.S. China Newsletter, July 22, 2011, looks at the 40th anniversary of ping-pong diplomacy, notes that the term was first used in 1901, and discusses how it was a bold bit of public diplomacy on China's part while China and the United States were engaged in back-channel discussions. Ito, Mayumi 2011. The Origin of Ping-pong Diplomacy, The Forgotten Architect of Sino-U.S. Rapprochement. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-230-11813-3. Matthews, J. The Strange Tale of American Attempts to Leap the Wall of China. The New York Times, 18 April 1971. Schwartz, Harry. Triangular Politics and China. The New York Times, 19 April 1971-37. Wang Guanhua. Friendship First, China's Sports Diplomacy in the Cold War Era. Journal of American East Asian Relations 12.3-4 Fall Winter 2003, 133-153. Xu Guoqi. The Sport of Ping-Pong Diplomacy. Ch. 5, In Olympic Dreams, China and Sports 1895-2008 Cambridge, M.A., Harvard University Press, 2008 ISBN 978-0-674-02840-1, pp. 117-163. External links Zhuang Zedong 2007 Talk about the 1971 encounter PBS article Smithsonian Magazine article New round of ping-pong diplomacy The Guardian, Tuesday, June 10, 2008